Sharks are one of the most diverse groups of animals in our oceans. Differing in size, shape, color, habitat, and behavior, the range is quite considerable. There's a common misconception that sharks are this ancient species that have barely changed since they first evolved before the dinosaurs, but that isn't quite true. Yes, their evolutionary footprint is pretty similar, but considering just how diverse they've become, to say they've barely changed wouldn't be sticking to the facts. Over time, sharks have been forced to adapt to oceans that were constantly changing, and that's why today there's over 500 different species, all evolved to slot perfectly into their ecological niches. But there's one order of sharks that hasn't really changed at all. The hexanchiforms are considered to be the most ancient lineage of sharks alive today, first evolving nearly 200 million years ago. This supposed primitive order of sharks contains the hexanchidae, the cow sharks like six gills and seven gill sharks, but it also contains chlamydosalacidae, otherwise known as the frilled sharks. The frilled shark comes from a line so ancient, 80 million years to be precise, that to us, it doesn't even look like a shark. With its eel-like body, ruffled gill slits, and gnarly rows of teeth, this strange animal has been described by many as a living fossil, and it gives us a frightening flashback to what our oceans might have looked like millions of years ago. Some have even suggested that this shark is partly responsible for the rumors of sea serpents in ancient and medieval times. Scientists have been arguing about the frilled shark for years and years, but there's no arguing that this deep sea shark is a literal living nightmare. But why is it remained so unchanged when many other sharks have diversified so much in their time on Earth. Well, today I'm going to tell you all about it. Now, I'm somewhat bucking the trend for this video. Normally, I'd open up the creature features to the Shark Bites members, but there's a Shark Bites subscriber out there that's been waiting a very long time for this frilled shark video. Not as long as the hexanchiform lineage, admittedly, but still a long time. Lottery has been trying ardently to get a frilled shark creature feature for the last few years. And based on their comment from a few weeks ago, there's a fair few of you that I think probably probably also feel the same. So strap yourselves in, this is your frilled shark deep dive. The frilled shark is a medium sized deep water shark with a patchy distribution across the Atlantic and Pacific oceans. Sometimes it's kind of tough to get an appreciation of the size of animals like this because we don't often have things to compare it to within the frame. But generally they're coming in around a meter and a half, although the largest frilled shark to ever be recorded was two meters long, about the size of your average door. So it's likely there's frilled sharks out there that could pretty easily pass that two meter mark. It was first described by German ichthyologist Ludwig Dudelein while he was visiting Japan between 1879 and 1881. Ludwig managed to save two specimens and sent them to Vienna, but at some point in time his taxonomy data and manuscript were lost. In the meantime, American zoologist Samuel Garman swept in and pipped Ludwig to the post, describing the frilled shark officially in 1884. Ouch. That's got a sting. Garman placed the new species, which he described as an extraordinary shark into its own genus and family and gave it the official scientific name, Chlamydosalacus anguineus. Anguineus? Anguineus? I do not know how to say that word. <laughs> Why a Latin name so hard? <laughs> Anyway, breaking that down, clammy comes from the Greek word for frill and salakas for shark, and then the Latin anguineus or anguineus translates to snake-like. And that Latin description for the species as being snake-like is pretty spot on. When you look at its body, it definitely appears to be snake or eel-like and moves through the water like how you imagine a snake or eel would do. Down the years, some people have suggested that the frilled shark is to blame for all those rumors about sea serpents in ancient mythology. And when you look at ancient artwork, you can kind of see it. Cryptozoologists have argued with each other over this for quite a while, with some saying that that couldn't be true because the sea serpents were depicted to be much larger. And these frilled sharks aren't really getting much bigger than two meters that we know of anyway. Others have said though that there may have once been a larger relative of frilled sharks that might have been mistaken for sea serpents, pointing to larger species in the fossil records. I'm not sure I'm entirely buying that because these sharks are damn good at surviving in the deep sea, but as soon as they get to shallow water, they don't tend to do very well. And all those sea serpent myths involved creatures being at the surface of the water, but what do I know? Now, if you're a shark, why would you have a body shape more similar to a snake? Well, it's all to do with how they feed on their prey. If you watch a snake when it's hunting, they'll often curl their bodies up and strike quickly with their large wide heads, allowing them to engulf that prey whole. And it's thought that that's exactly how the frilled shark hunts in the deep ocean. Although scientists can't be sure because they haven't seen it before, they believe frilled sharks to hunt just like how a snake does. Moving stealthily through the water, the frilled shark will curl its body tightly and then strike at lightning speed pinning its prey down and swallowing it whole. Because the head is just so wide and because their jaw can open out massively, it allows them to swallow prey that's at least half their own body size, which is wildly impressive 
and very snake-like. It's kind of like if a human were to swallow a king penguin whole. What a weird analogy to use. I'm really not quite sure how that popped into my head. Anyway, most other shark species will be ripping off pieces of flesh from fish or marine mammals and swallowing them down. But the frilled shark just goes all in. One gulp and you're gone. Which is probably why they've been compared to viper fish and gulper fish who look and feed in a very similar way. The frilled shark teeth perfectly adapt them for capturing this prey before they decide to gulp it down. Their mouths are lined with around 300 teeth across 25 or so rows. And these teeth are three-pronged, almost like tiny little tridents, and they all point backwards into the mouth. And that provides them with nearly a thousand sharp hooks on which to trap their unfortunate prey. Although scientists believe the teeth are not just used for trapping prey, but maybe even luring prey as well. At the depths where frilled sharks are lurking about, around a thousand meters down, there's of course little to no light at all. And considering these sharks are a dark brownish gray color, their bodies would almost be invisible to most things down there. But their teeth are bright white. These bright white teeth reflect whatever light is present down there and stand out against the backdrop of their dark bodies and mouths, which could end up luring any unsuspecting prey species within striking distance of the sharks. Scientists think this because on the rare occasion that a frilled shark had been kept in captivity, the shark swum around with its mouth open. And one of the hypotheses that they came to was the shark was trying to lure things closer to its mouth to eat them. Creepy. We're going to talk a little bit more about that captive frilled shark a bit later on, so stick around. Okay, so these pearly whites aren't designed for slashing or tearing, they're for pinning and grasping and maybe even luring. So if you're a deep sea fish, shark or squid and you've got within striking range of a frilled shark, there's not much hope for you. Based on the analyzed stomach contents of some frilled sharks, we know that it feeds on a variety of different prey species. Small shark species have cropped up on a few occasions within the stomachs of frilled sharks, with one of them even containing the spine of a spiny dogfish embedded in its stomach. Squids tend to make up the largest section of their diet, with most being deep sea squids, although some frilled sharks have had midwater squids found in their stomachs as well, which would suggest that this shark doesn't spend the entirety of its time in the deepest depths of our oceans, but actually moves up the water column to find food. Some researchers even suggested that they occasionally come up from a thousand meters deep to shallower waters of around 50 meters deep, which is where they've taken on and consumed some larger and faster swimming squid species. That science has come on quite a way because 20 years ago, we thought these sharks were too slow to be able to catch fast moving prey species. But based on those stomach content analyses, those scientists were proved completely wrong. Now, I think it's probably about time we talked about those funky gill slits because these are wild. If we think back to the genus name for frilled sharks, Chlamydosalacus, the clammy bit derives from the Greek word frill. And the entire reason it was given that genus name was because of the appearance of those gill slits. They're fluffy, ruffled, and fringed, and almost seem to resemble one of those weird collars worn by Queen Elizabeth I. I can kind of see the resemblance, to be fair. The frilled shark has six pairs of these gill slits, which is one more than most other shark species who have five. The other hexanchiform sharks also have more than five gill slits, with the six gill shark having six gill slits, and then the seven gill, you get the picture. There's actually only two other shark species that have more than five, and that's the six gill saw sharks. Check out that video in the top right if you want to learn a little bit more about those awesome sharks, by the way. Now, unlike the other sharks who have more than five gill slits, the first gill slit on frilled sharks actually extends underneath the throat where it meets the slit on the other side, hence the whole Elizabethan collar thing. These sharks are also known to be ovoviviparous, which means the offspring develop in the eggs, which then hatch in the womb, where the sharks then feed off the yolk sac before being born live. But the frilled shark is reported to have the longest gestation period for all known living vertebrates. For a while, we thought this accolade might belong to spiny dogfish or even basking sharks, but the frilled shark takes first place with a reported maximum gestation period of three and a half years absolutely incredible. I do say maximum there as there are occasions when the frilled shark gestation period has been a bit lower than that, maybe around one to two years. Three and a half years though, that is unbelievable. Make sure you hit that like button for all those single frilled shark moms out there doing us proud. So it's pretty clear that this shark is unlike 99.9% .9 of all other living shark species. And while the evolutionary biologists argue exactly how old this shark lineage is, there's no denying it's an ancient shark. Based on fossils from from over 80 million years ago, its body shape hasn't really changed much compared to its ancestors. But why hasn't it changed when so many other sharks have diversified? Well, that bit's down to the deep ocean. The field shark ancestors were likely to have been inhabiting the deep water prehistoric oceans, and they expertly adapted to life at those depths. And because there isn't much else down there at those depths, field sharks were never outcompeted by another shark species. So they weren't forced to adapt and change. We know that competition for resources is a key driver
survivor in adaptation and natural selection, but when you're already that specialized, you don't really need to change. As they say, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Now, even though the frilled shark was described back in the 1800s, pretty much every single individual that was documented by humans was dead. And that's usually because these sharks are caught in deep sea nets or even shallower gill nets sometimes. And after being hauled to the surface, they don't tend to survive the quick pressure change. But back in 2004, that all changed when scientists managed to capture video footage of a living frilled shark in its natural habitat. And this right here is that video footage taken from a deep sea submersible dive where they managed to spot the shark at a depth of 873 meters just off the southeast coast of America. Three years later though, a Japanese fisherman would stumble upon a live frilled shark at the surface of the water at a port just south of Tokyo. The shark was later transported to the Awashima Marine Park where it was placed into a seawater pool and observed. Unfortunately, the female frilled shark didn't survive for very long and died within a matter of hours. As to exactly why it was mooching around at the surface in the first place, I'm not sure, but I'd say it was most likely an already sick or unwell individual and it had ended up getting into difficulty at the surface. The idea that frilled sharks though are extremely rare only comes from the fact that we don't really see them because they don't often appear in the shallows. But it turns out them being rare is actually a fairly common misconception. These sharks in certain parts of the world come up in deep sea nets pretty regularly. So much so that the IUCN Red List has placed them in the least concerned category as of 2016. And after a more recent assessment in 2023, they've stayed in that category. It's likely they'll remain at that listing for the foreseeable future because they're generally fairly safe from destructive fishing activities at the depths where they live. The waters off Japan and New Zealand though are without doubt definite hotspots for frilled sharks. But also the North and Northeast Atlantic crops up quite a lot for frilled sharks as well, particularly that mid-Atlantic ridge. They seem to love it down there. So thankfully it seems this nightmare shark seems to be doing just fine at the moment, which isn't something we can often say for a shark species these days. The deep sea is a real messed up place. Honestly, some of the stuff down there literally blows my mind. The crazy thing is we're still finding new shark species down there as well like all the time. And in this video right here, I talk you through some of the brand new shark species that we've discovered from the shadowy depths. From six gill saw sharks to demon cat sharks, they're from the deep and some of them are pretty terrifying. So make sure you check them out here.